Hey guys, it's Coach Dan. A lot of people are starting to get really curious about the big upcoming changes to the PMP exam in 2021, and they're gonna be massive, okay? Not only are we getting a tremendous amount of new content into the exam, but we're also going to have very new and challenging question types, all right? It won't just be multiple choice questions anymore. All right, so I just wanted to take some time today and do a quick review of all of the most important points about how the exam is changing uh, so that you can properly get prepared and know whether or not you want to take the test this year before the end of calendar year 2020 or if you're going to wait until the new exam on January 2nd, 2021, all right? All right, so let's take a look. All right, so let's get started. Look, the PIMBOK guide is not a direct match, right? We know that, okay? And today I'm gonna to show you about the new exam that's coming. Who's excited to see what the new exam is gonna be like? And the big news is, is that very soon I will be launching a full premium course for the new exam type, and I'm gonna have the old one and the new one run in parallel. All right, on a scale of one to 10, how's my audio? One would be terrible, 10 would be like a professional recording studio. Okay, maybe uh, Eric try doing a little reboot or something. Uh, so we're gonna go over the old, we're gonna go over the new exam, it's gonna be exciting. All right, and uh, then I'm gonna show you the old exam. All right, but people say, oh, Dan, should I, st I'll just read the PIMBOK two times. The PIMBOK's not an exact match for the exam. All right, and if you want to know more accurately what's going to be on the exam, all right, then you should check out the exam content outline. All right, so, and we know that PMI updates this every few years, right? I know that's hard to see, but in 2005 when they released it, they actually, professional responsibility was actually a domain back then. They got rid of that in 2010. In 2015, they added stakeholder knowledge area. In 2018, they updated it to 49 processes. And then in 2019, before this virus stuff came along, they said, hey, everybody, you can forget about initiate, plan, execute, and control, and close. We're going to a three-domain layout people, process, and environment, business environment. Is, raise your hand if you've not heard that the exam is going to a three-domain structure. All right, so let's take a closer look at this new three-domain layout that they're going to. All right, here it is. It's pretty cool, too, and uh, I've already created it into my famous ITTO Explorer, so... Many of you guys probably already know my current PIMBOK 6 ITTO, right? Develop project charter, creates the charter. And this is a great tool my customers love to just practice the ITTOs. Well, I did the new version. And um, it's also very cool, all right? But it operates on a different fundamental. You've got domains, people's processes, and business environment, and you've got these tasks that roll up into it like lead a team. And lead a team has these enablers that roll up into it. So the enablers roll up into a task and the task rolls up into a domain. All right, so kind of different, you know? And let's talk about how that old framework relates to the new one. All right, we can see the old one fitting into the new one in the sense that we see elements of the old framework occurring across people, process, and business domain, but it's a little bit harder to track the linear nature of it, right? We, it's not a checklist, this thing, but basically we know time goes this way, right? And that the project closure is over here. That's a little bit harder to see from here because we see that yeah, we got planning in people. We've got planning in process. We've got planning over there. Execution over here, and over there, and maybe over there, even over here, right? So, you know, it's not exactly uh, as traceable 
as that last document is it. But the old framework is still relevant, but it becomes much less of a percentage of the exam. We're no longer basing the exam on initiate, plan, execute, control, and close. Now the domain's exams are based on the hierarchy of domain, task, and enabler. So less emphasis on the ITTOs, more understanding on all the under details of enablers. All right, the ITTO framework's still there, but this new three domain structure is more lightweight, more flexible, and allows for the inclusion of agile content and other approaches. Uh-oh, I said the A word. Who loves agile? Who would rather love agile than PMBOK, than Waterfall? Because I gotta tell you, the PMBOK 6 that we currently do for the test is 90% or more Waterfall question styles. And we know that starting next year, it goes to 50-50. So we lose 50% of the waterfall and we pick up 50% new agile. Oh no. All right, well, let's dive in so you can be able to understand really more thoroughly the new three domain layout. I want you to learn a little bit about the first domain called the people domain. And I don't have time to go through all 14 enablers with you, but I'll go through the first three of the 14 tasks. Sorry, tasks. I'm still learning the new words myself. Uh, and uh, it does seem a little bit more real world, although it seems a little bit harder for the student who's studying, you know? Um, all right, so we're going to look at what three tasks, manage conflict, lead a team, and support team performance, right? These three, manage conflict, lead a team, and support team performance. Now, in my full course that I'm going to launch soon, I'm going to have the whole enchilada in there. But for now, that's what we'll go through today. All right, PMI is going to start this on January 2nd, People, Processes, and Business Environment. Okay. Now, you know, as a member of PMI, you can download a copy of that ECO right off the PMI website, right? Do you know that? And they put some really important information on it, like this exam is a vital a part of activities of getting certified, and they want to make sure that the exam reflects real-life practices. Now, all the questions on the exam have been written extensively reviewed, by multiple PMP certified people, and they all track back to at least two academic resources. One final point to point out from PMI's ECO is that there is finally noticeable differences between this exam and the PMBOK guide. Every time they told us in the past, it's major changes, major changes. It wasn't that different. Well, now guess what? It's going to be massively different. All right, but while there are some commonalities still, it's going to be important that the volunteer task force was specifically told that, guys, you do not have to be bound by the PMBOK guide. Right, so, you know, a key takeaway, therefore, is that we're going to have a new influx of listed materials that could be possible on the exam, right, like the Agile Practice Guide, for example. But, you know, PMI has developed a reference list. But beware that even the reference list isn't an end-all, be-all. I'll give you a sample. I'll show you the list for the Agile Certified Practitioner. All right, this is the list PMI puts out there. You probably see a few of these getting over there. Hey, Kevin, if you had to pick one or two of these that might now also be used on the PMP exam, which ones would you pick? Um, let's see. Well, the Agile Manifestos and Principles are just, it's a, it's an actual Agile Alliance, uh, um, that's actual a document. That's a definite. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, so this, but you know, there's going to be a list for PMP. It's a lot of books, right? All right. Welcoming. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Welcoming Agile to PMP, right? So all three domains, beware. It's not that agile will only happen here or only happen here or maybe only here or maybe just these tasks. No, no. Agile on the exam will be spread evenly across all domains, tasks, and enablers. Because PMI wants the certification to be reflective of current methods, so about half the exam is going to be predictive and the other half is going to be a combo. 
of agile and hybrid. And it's not gonna be limited. Like I said, it'll be across the board. All right, let's get a definition of domain, task, and enabler. Domain, defined as the high-level knowledge area that's essential to the practice of project management. Tasks are the underlying responsibilities of the PM within each domain, and the enablers are illustrative examples of the work associated with each task. And when we show you these uh, enablers, for example, let me just pick plan and manage budget and resources, boom, you'll see that they got a little caveat in here, right? This is not, there's not just four enablers for this. PMI just lists these as a few examples to help demonstrate, right? Okay. So there's your definitions on the hierarchy, and we'll talk a little bit today about the people exam, and it's 42% of the exam. So... Quite simply, if we take a calculator, you're getting 84 questions on the people uh, on the people domain. You're getting 84 questions. All right, domain one covers 42%, and from the ECO, we know that it comes right out of the job task analysis. All right, and the domain includes tasks that are also covered in the sixth edition of the role of the project manager, all right? But there is a big departure from the project manager as large and in charge and command and control and more of an emphasis now on servant leadership. And servant leadership is explored in detail in the new agile standard from PMI with regards to domain one. So once again, domain covers 42%, there's 14 tasks and within those tasks, there's 53 enablers when they're all added up. All right, let's quickly burn through the 14 tasks, right? Manage conflict, lead a team, support team performance, empower team members and stakeholders, ensure team members and stakeholders are adequately trained, build a team, address and remove impediments, negotiate project agreements, collaborate with stakeholders, build a shared understanding, engage and support virtual teams, define team ground rules, mentor stakeholders, promote team performance. All right, I know that might have been a little boring for you, but uh, you know, that's that, that's these, uh, that's these 14 tasks right here. I think the test is gonna be, um, you know, making more sense in real life now, like people said. All right, now with the overview of the people domain sort of complete, now we're gonna to start to drill down. Let's get into task one, manage conflict. Talk about task two, lead a team, and task three, support performance. Who's ready? Give me a little love here. Click like, tell me if you're excited, all right? Task one, manage conflict. All right, we have to interpret the source and the stage of the conflict, right? What are the sources of conflict? Money, schedule, priorities. What are the stages, right? Could be very minimal to like world war, right? So we need to know that we need to analyze the context for the conflict. What's going on in the company right now? What's going on in the project? Is there layoffs? Is there lack of budget? You know, and, and then once we do that, we can then evaluate and recommend the proper conflict resolution solutions, all right? And that is very important. Now there's five general techniques for resolving conflict and each one has its use. All right, we can retreat from potential toxic situations to resolve them later. We can smooth things over, smooth them under the rug, probably not a good long time, long term solution. All right, and we can compromise and reconcile. Um, also we can, for oop, I got a little spelling there that we could force or direct people to do something, but PMI number one is collaborate and problem solve. All right, so here is the five levels of conflict and you can see the escalation goes this way while the de-escalation goes that way. And in level one, you know, we just got a problem to solve. There's no conflict yet, but then people start to have disagreements. They start getting personal. They start having a crusade against each other. And then once they stop talking, 
All right. Once the communication stops, there really is no potential to de-escalate. All right. So these are our five levels of conflict. And uh, let's go on to task two, lead a team. All right. Lead a team has seven enablers. Set a clear vision and mission, support diversity and inclusions, value servant leadership, determine leadership style, inspire, motivate, and influence, analyze team members and distinguish various options to lead various team members and stakeholders. Wow, that's a mouthful, right? All right. So this refers to a leadership role of the project manager. Most of these concepts are related to develop team and manage team. Remember them, right? Remember the resource knowledge area, develop team. And so they start talking about similar tools and techniques. So this stuff isn't going away, all right? Conflict management, team building, motivation. It's still there, but we're just sort of looking at it in a different spot. All right, now part of leadership includes establishing a clear vision, all right, and this is a part of the agile process of chartering the project and continuing to trace or connect outcomes that are delivered to the vision. A project team is made up of many diverse individuals and culture becomes very important. Actually, diversity becomes a soft skill now for the PM and it's actually added to the project's manager competencies. All right, now leadership and leadership styles are very important. All right, we're going to illustrate the most important ones for the exam. You're going to have autocratic. This is one person making the decision against everyone. Consultative would be, you know, working with others to determine it. Consensus means you want to get every, as many people to agree as possible, right? Facilitative or working with shareholders, coaching and mentoring, supportive, and most importantly, servant leadership. All right, so those are your leadership styles. Uh, motivational theories, you might remember these from Pinbox 6, Maslow, McGregor, Herzberg, and McClelland. You guys remember these? All right, Maslow said, the first thing people want is physiological comfort and safety. Then they'll start to look for a social connection, work on their self-esteem, and then finally self-actualization. But they don't go up the ladder until they satisfy the one below it. All right, McGregor's Theory X and Theory Y. How are the people in Theory X category perceived? As inherently lazy, self-centered, and we have to lead them by the hand, right? But Theory Y managers believe that people are actually motivated to do a good job, but they don't have to be pushed or threatened in order to get them to do their assigned work. And then finally, there is also something called contingency theory Z, which means that there is no one type of situation that's appropriate, it really depends on the situation. One day you might have to be a theory X guy, the next day you're a theory Y gal, right? That goes in line with tailoring. Um, Herzberg's. Yeah, pay, working conditions, the attitude of your supervisor. Yeah, I want my paycheck. I want to be safe at work, and I don't want my boss to be a jerk. It's not that these are crazy motivators, but the absence of these could be highly demotivational. All right, McClellan says, hey, people have a need for power and affiliation. All right, these are required over time, and they're shaped by people's life's experiences, but they include achievement, affiliation, and power. All right, now let's talk about stakeholder classification. Now, just in addition to conflict management and motivating the team, the PM also has to be able to do that stakeholder classification. All right, because it's all about satisfying the informational needs of the stakeholder, right? When we were over here, in the old stakeholder knowledge area, that's what we were figuring out. Okay, what do they need and when do they need it by? So we need to do this classification. There's many different tools we can use, a number of different types of grids and the salience models. But basically the one that I feel is probably the most popular and you're most likely to get on the PMP exam is the power and interest grid. Right, and if we're looking at a sample of a power and interest grid, 
We'd say, okay, what if they have really high power but really low interest? All right, fine, let's just keep them satisfied. What if they have really low power and low interest? Let's just monitor them. What if they're super powerful and super interested? Well, then we gotta engage them heavily, right? These guys, we can just keep informed. Okay, people domain task three, support team performance. All right, we're gonna appraise team member performance against KPIs. We're gonna support and recognize team member growth, determine the appropriate feedback approach, verify performance improvements. All right, now, the project manager has to support the performance of the team and the performance of the team has to deliver results according to the identified objectives. So look, rather than just dwelling on ways to always get people to work harder and get more output, all right, we really need to spend a lot of time now focusing on positive results and showing appreciation for those efforts. Right, we remember in PIMBOK 6, Manage Team also used a thing called Work Performance Reports, which really helps the project manager evaluate the work done to determine if they need to do a change request. And that feedback's critical. All right, we can hold retrospectives and we can capture lessons learned. Well, in Agile, we do frequent reviews of the work product and people and the analysis of all three are needed to make sure the team's performing at the highest possible level. So that's why we really do need to throw in here a couple of slides on work performance reporting. Thank you, FundMe. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so check it out. So you've got all of this work performance data. And where does the work, here's a bonus question. On the old PMBOK, where does the work performance data come from as an output? Anybody? Anyone? My goodness. Nobody? Oh, you guys. All right. Work performance data comes from, along with the deliverables, direct and manage project work, work performance data. We know it gets pushed into M and C to get analyzed and we know it comes out as work performance information from all of the monitoring and controlling processes. Great, now what do we do with all of this work performance information? That's easy. We send it right up here into monitoring control project work. It gets aggregated, analyzed, and it comes out as the work performance reports, right? So all that work performance information all flows in there, all right, and comes out as work performance reports. Now, they're the physical or electronic representations of all that information we compiled in monitoring and controlling. Okay, it was the result of organizing and summarizing the work performance data and the work performance information and putting it into a report. And then the information is sent in the form of reports to stakeholders, all right, so they know how the project's doing. Could be physical or electronically distributed. And those methods would be contained in the communications management plan because when we're up here in plan communications management, right, we know that this is where the reporting formats and communication procedures are documented. All right. But why, right, why? What does the PM get out of it? Well, the work performance report helps the PM manage the team, manage the communications, do change control, and monitor risks. Well, what about the management? Okay, PM can send those same reports to management and they can use them to analyze, decide, forecast, and take specific actions. All right, who's having fun? Who wants to try a few questions from the new exam in the form of Agile? Anybody? You guys want me to just stop right here? Maybe we should just stop right here. If you guys want to stop, if you're not having fun, if you don't feel engaged, we could stop right here. All right, you've twisted my arm. All right, in a daily stand-up meeting, who of the following should not be an active participant? Now, don't put it in the chat. Please don't put it in the chat. 
put it in the poll. Because all my coaching classes are live interactive polls. Now, if the poll did not just pop up for you, maybe you're on some weird mobile device, all right, wait 30 seconds and then put your answer in the chat. Hi, Galena. Okay, final answers, final answers. And the overwhelming majority of people felt that it was answer D. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Smart people. And why? There's an explanation for you. Oh, yeah. Who's ready for another one? The team is in the second sprint of a four sprint release plan when the customer requests several new features added to the pro and the project manager knows the very next thing that he has to do is what? Okay, I'm going to launch the poll in five seconds. I want you to be able to look at the screen before I launch it. Kevin, I'm going to let you vote. But I can see which one you choose, so you better not get them wrong. Just kidding. How do you guys find this interactive polling? Do you like this? Likey. Okay, we got a tie going. We got a tie going. We got a lot of disagreement on this one. All right, all right, all right. We can't be here all day, though. Okay, final answers. If you don't know, just guess, all right? Final answers in three, two. All right, the A's won. Let's see. Oh, yeah. But why? Sprints are part of agile development methods, and new scope from the customer goes on the backlog and is prioritized later. In Agile, sprint retrospectives focus on Fast and furious. We got a lot of agreement on it. But we got some people picking the wrong ones. These must be waterfall people. All right, five seconds. Five, four. Waterfall people. Waterfall people. Dun, 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 dun. That's Bob Marley. All right. Um, yeah, so you guys like to see what's working well and what's not working well. You bet. Sprint, sprint retrospectives are kind of lessons learned from the current sprint and what could be done better in the future. All right. P.S. There's going to be more references for the Agile exam, right? I showed you that earlier. So we want to try to avoid those if possible, right? Okay, guys, that is your overview on the new exam. Do you want to see a diagram which shows you why you should pass PIMBOK 6 right now? Talk to me. All right, let's take a look. Let's do some comparisons here. Okay, you know, you know the new one. But this is the one you love, right? This is the one you love and admire. All right, now, let's take a look at it on this table, right? We can see we have developed project charter and identify stakeholders. Those two start first, right? Okay. Then we start planning. 
And what's the first part of the project plan we start populating, guys? What's the first component of the project plan we start building? Going once, going twice. Thank you, Rashida. The scope knowledge area, right? And then we're gonna collect the requirements, create the scope statement and the work breakdown structure. All right, time to create the schedule plan get the activity list, do our precedence diagramming and network diagram, estimate all the activity durations and create the project schedule. And then it's on to planning the cost and getting our estimates and the cost baseline. We have to know the quality standards and we're gonna make our way all the way through all of the planning processes for risk, for procurement and even for stakeholder. All right, who wants to take a guess? What phase starts next? Who wants to take a guess? What process in that phase? Rashida, what process? What process within execution? One of the 49, somebody. No, nope, no, 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 nope. Starts with a direct and manage. Just kidding. All right, direct and manage. It's always an integration process that begins the next phase. All right, then we can do quality audits and hire people and train them and manage them. This is what we were going over in the new ECL, lead a team, right? Manage team, lead a team, all right? Um, and yeah, so we'll generate the communications, implement the risk responses, conduct our procurements and select our vendors. All right, time to go to the next process group. Rashida, what's the integration process that kicks off M and C? Or anyone, what's the first process that fires off in monitoring and controlling? Thank you, William. Monitor and control project work and then PICC. All right, and then we're gonna do all of the remaining monitoring and controlling processes and we close out, okay? Who liked this table? Who wants me to send this to them? Well, guess what? Everybody who stays to the end of this, and I know I can check the system later, you guys are gonna get an entire free course on the new exam, all right? An intro on that first, all right? So talk to me. Does that, does that framework that I just went through for Pinbox 6 seem easier than the three ECO layout to you? It is, right? It's logical, it's sequential, it's cool. I mean, I guess, yeah, okay, fun me. All right, so some people might feel naughty, and, you know, but, but many people, you know, waterfall people, people who've been studying they don't want to talk about that new one, right? All right, let's go further, all right? Now, we know we have the charter and the stakeholder register, and those serve as the inputs to developing the project management plan. All right, now, Rashida, what was that first part of the project plan we started creating again called? I can't remember. Come on guys, somebody, first part of the plan. Scope management. Okay, what's the next knowledge area we put into the project management plan? Schedule, Daniel, thank you. And then what's next? Cost, right? Quality, resource, communications, risk, procurement, stakeholder. Now, don't forget, we got three baselines too, scope baseline, schedule baseline, and cost baseline, but I wanna focus on these discrete project subsidiary plans because I like to display this PMP information in a way that's visually interactive, and I hope that this is something you find very engaging and very logical. Each one of these sub plans going right into that big overall develop project management plan process, and then we're serving it up right into execution, boom. 
All right. And after we start doing direct and manage, oh yeah, we're going to start generating knowledge. So we better start managing that. But let's get those deliverables. Could be one, could be many. Bonus question, where do the deliverables go? To the customer or somewhere else first? Joe got it right, quality. Because the internal quality specters need to look at the deliverables. What are they looking for? I wonder what the quality inspectors are looking for in the deliverables. What do you think they're looking for? How about defects? Could they be looking to see if the deliverables have defects? And what tool or technique would they use to look for defects, Daniel? inspection right okay cool the internal team checks them out they're like yeah we verified them send them to the customer the customer looks at them and says i love them they're accepted close the project drop the mic boom done oh wait a minute there was a change request we don't reset we don't want the deliverables oh no time to send it to the change control board and if they approve it then we're going back to execution to create additional deliverables all right we got to keep going through this process until there's no more change requests and all the deliverables go through. Awesome. All right. Do you think you have all the ITTOs memorized now? Oh, sorry. All right. How about if we test your knowledge with a couple of ITTO questions from Pimbox 6? How's that sound? All right. You just saw it on the diagram. All right, just say, let's do this in the chat, and then I will do it if you say, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. All right, here we go. With a list of stakeholders in hand and a clearly documented project charter, the project manager should now begin doing what? I want to see all 74 people answer on this question. Come on, guys. We're here to learn. You don't learn by playing it safe. You got to take chances. You got to be out there operating on the edges of your ability. Take a guess, man. I got to get more than 75% at least. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely calling out. I'm calling out that the two initiating processes are done. Now, what did I say several times in class about what's the first part of the project plan that starts, right? All right, we start doing plan scope management. Now, during the managed stakeholder engagement process, which of the following tasks is not performed Okay, five seconds. Okay, final answers, please. And the bees have it, let's see. That's right, identify stakeholders is primarily done in the initiating. Now, can we do it also in executing? Yes, we will. But a question like that, okay, they're talking about generally. A project to upgrade audiovisual tools in a school district may require the development of a purchase of software. 
projects currently in execution when the project manager realizes the decision about the software has not been made. What did the PM most likely miss during planning? Yeah, some people don't get the poll pop up. That's because they're on some sort of a phone or something. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. But, you know, I don't think people should look at it and, and, and it should have no effect if you see what people choose because, you know, many people are wrong. All right, here we go. Uh, did I launch it? No, I didn't launch it. Okay, here we go. I'll give you a couple extra seconds on this one because it's a longer question than we've been having. All right, 15 seconds. All right, 10 seconds. Okay, you guys like answer A? Make or buy decisions, that's right. That's part of plan procurement management. Okay. In which of the following processes is the risk register created? Final answers, please. All right. It's not plan risk management, okay, because the output of plan risk management is the risk management plan, right? Plan risk management, risk management plan, identify risks gives you the risk register. All right. To which project management process group does managed stakeholder engagement belong? All right, softball time, softball time. I want 100% right on this one. This is just following the rule, know thy table. If you know your table, this is a question that's answered in about three seconds. If you don't know the table, you're getting this wrong probably. All right, final answers, please. Final answers. Lots of disagreement on this, which is unfortunate because clearly, although I am up too high, manage stakeholder engagement, executing, right? Oof, okay. All right, guys, let me ask you a question. Did you like those Pimbox six questions more than the first set of questions from Agile? I think you did. All right, do you want to pass before the change? Hey, guys, it's Coach Dan. I hope you really liked that video about the old exam versus the new. All right, and down below in the comments, I've got a link to a totally free course on the new exam. I've rolled out a prototype of my 2021 course, and I want you to be one of the first people to see it. It's got modules from the new 
PMP material, and it's got a new exam simulator type for next year's material as well. So take advantage of that. And of course, I would appreciate it, guys, if you would uh, click like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time.